Venture capital, VC, is a critical component of the startup ecosystem, providing early stage companies with the funding they need to grow and succeed. This video breaks down the structure, operation and dynamics of venture capital. Let's start with the formation of the fund. The foundation of a venture capital fund begins with the partners. They provide the strategic direction, make key investment decisions and manage relationships with both investors and portfolio companies. So I founded my venture capital firm with my former co-founder after we sold our software startup for 100 million. After we sold, we realized that we could help other founders do the same because we had the knowledge and had built out a solid network in our own journey. We sold our company 10 years ago, so of course a lot of the progress happening now is beyond us, but we like to be part of it. After establishing the fund's strategy and focus, the partners then set out to raise money for the fund. They approach limited partners, LPs, who are the primary contributors of capital. LPs can include institutional investors, like pension funds and university endowments, government entities or sovereign wealth funds, high net worth individuals, HNWIs, family offices, as in rich families that invest their own money, even entire corporations. My goal is to diversify the portfolio of our pension fund. You know, money makes money. It doesn't really matter what it is as long as it looks good on paper. Raising funds often relies heavily on the partner's network, past performance and the appeal of their proposed investment strategy. Venture capital firms usually focus on specific sectors, e.g. AI, biotech, fintech and stages of company growth. The stages can range from seed stage, idea stage or just initiated traction typically raising between 100k and 2 million. Early stage, where there may be signs of growth or acceleration of that initial traction, typically raising 2 million to 10 million. Growth stage, where the company is scaling rapidly, raising 10 million plus. This focus allows the VC firm to develop expertise, networks, and a reputation in that particular niche making them more attractive to both limited partners, investors and startups within that space. We have the partners, the limited partner money and the strategy. But how do venture capital firms actually make more money? VC fund economics are generally structured around two primary revenue sources for the firm. A management fee, typically around 2% of the fund's total value annually. This covers operational expenses and salaries, a carried interest or carry, which is around 20%. This is the venture capital firm's share of the profits from the fund's investments. So, if the venture capital fund is managing, say, 100 million of money from limited partners, they'll use 2% or 2 million to pay themselves and any staff each year. Then if fund makes say 1 billion in profit from startup investments, they will take 200 million. That rate of return would be rare, but it has been done numerous times by smart venture capitalists. With the fund established and capital secured, VC firms turn their attention to deal flow, the steady stream of startups seeking investment. Startups typically offer equity stakes ranging from 10 to 30% in exchange for the capital. The selection process is rigorous, involving due diligence, market research and extensive vetting. Often times after the investment deal closes, the partner may take a seat at the board of the startup company, leading to undue pressure and influence. Coupled with the potential misalignment of incentives, this can cause a startup to head in a direction less focused on the original goal of solving a certain problem, but just scaling by throwing money at whatever seems to work at the time. Then comes the dilution. We raised six rounds for our startup, seed, series A, B, C, D, and E. 
By the end of it, we only had 20% of our own company, combined. In many deals, multiple VC firms come together to invest, especially when large sums are involved. This syndication spreads the risk among the investing parties. But this can also create a bandwagoning effect. The partners of VC firms don't actually know what startup is going to be successful. It's all an educated guess. However, if they see another firm is in, especially a well-known firm, this in itself looks like validation and can create a fear of missing out. The ultimate goal of a VC investment is a profitable exit, either through an acquisition of the startup by a larger company or an initial public offering, IPO. Time is of the essence. Most VC funds aim to exit their investments within five to 10 years. However, the venture capital game is inherently risky. A majority of startups fail, but the expectation is that the returns from a few successful exits will outweigh the losses from the failures. You know what's worse than a failed company? A stable company with little to no growth. They're a bane of resources, and honestly, we need to move on. Once the fund's life cycle nears its end, typically after 10 years, it undergoes a liquidation process. The remaining assets are sold, and the returns are distributed to the limited partners. After returning the initial capital, the VC firm takes its share from the profits, the 20% carry, and the remainder is distributed among the limited partners. Money makes money. Venture capital is a complex yet vital system that fuels innovation and entrepreneurial growth. It's a high-risk, high-reward game where partnerships, strategic focus and timely exits play pivotal roles in generating returns for all stakeholders. While this is all true, many founders don't realise that this is not the right funding for them. Only startups that are looking for astronomical growth that can only be achieved by selling part of the ownership of the company, then potentially all of the company, should be looking for VC funding. Ultimately, venture capital has undoubtedly fueled some of the most important, innovative, world-changing companies and founders of our time, especially when no one else would.